welcome back, comrades. Today we are talking about... No, I'm not even going to try doing a Russian accent. Welcome back, guys. It's Matimus. And once again, we are talking about anti-tank guided missiles from Russia. Basically, the king of all dogs when it comes to anti-tank guided missiles, especially during the Cold War era. And today, we are talking about the METI, or METI. I don't really know really the best way of saying it, but I'm going to run with METI. Uh, anti-tank guided missile. Now, in the 1970s, this was really a renaissance for the anti-tank weapon industry. It was just a plethora of different variants of anti-tank guided missiles coming out to take on the western onslaught of main battle tanks. Not only did the fusion of the miniaturization of optronics amplify the infantry's firepower, but there was many advances in missile technologies, which really meant that tanks and armored vehicles could really be taken out with really easy, easy methods of engaging them at superb ranges. Until then, the infantry used crew-served anti-tank and recoilless rifles like the Carl Gustav for anti-armor and all that good stuff. There were a few anti-tank guided missiles around in the 1970s that existed and were often just short-range guided rockets designed in the 1950s. The period was especially fertile for ATGMs from either side of the Iron Curtain. In some circumstances that remain baffling seriously until today, there were companies like the Soviet Union's Instrument Design Bureau who were actually able to create imitations of Western ATGMs whose capabilities were even better than the originals, just like the Dragon. This was exactly the case with the 9K115 METI, the Western designation known as the AT7 Saxhorn. In the form and function, it shared a striking similarity with the Franco-German Milan anti-tank guided missile system, very famous in multiple countries, including my own from the UK. Funnily enough, this Russian counterpart looked very similar to the Franco-German Milan anti-tank guided weapon system which was very prominent back in those days, especially with the British Army using the anti-tank teams in the back of the Warriors. They were a little smaller in terms of dimensions to the Milan, but still a very similar looking piece of equipment. Like the Milan, the Mete was deployed as a two-man system. One carried the launcher that had an integrated collapsible tripod, and his partner carried two launch tubes with missiles. These containers were waterproof and extremely lightweight. The third soldier might even carry an extra pair of missiles depending on the configuration of the infantry platoon at the time. The original range, penetration and warhead were very similar to Milan's. Both were wire guided sackcloth systems and brought additional firepower down to a company level alongside machine guns, light mortars and rocket launchers. But at the end of the day guys, we know primary focus of this weapon system is to knock out the heavy armor that was really designated to come after them in the Cold War era. In the greater scheme of things, the Mete was a Soviet foot slugger. Basically, the heftier Conquers was employed for their battles in taxis like the BMP-2. The original Mete did not enjoy the export success of previous Soviet ATGMs, and this really undeserved state consigned it to near obscurity. That being said, it still earned its place on the battlefield as being an extremely respectable anti-tank weapon system to be used against the Western world. By 1992, KBP introduced a new variant called the Meti M, or AT-13 Saxon II, and 20 years later the even more capable Meti M1 arrived. Both had larger 127mm missiles with a greater range and penetration. This meant the original system was now quite obsolete and could really not defeat any type of armoured vehicle currently in service today. The Mete M proved itself during a brief 2006 war between Israel and southern Lebanon, in a conflict that was almost decided by the widespread use of ATGMs, and we're seeing this still today guys, obviously in Syria and Iraq, long range guided missiles attacking tanks from an extremely long distance, and obviously filming it, being that, you know, that's the way they do things nowadays over there. Uh, but, you know, this is the platform that has been used for multiple different instances and conflicts out there today. Uh, sad to say that, you know, tank crews really don't stand a chance, especially older, uh, less, uh, you know, powerful main battle tanks or less armoured main battle tanks are just not able to withstand the penetration values of some of these anti-tank guided weapons. Israel, for instance, had a really hard time with most anti-tank guided weapon systems back in those days. Conquers, Cornet, the Mete, and even shoulder-fired RPG-7s and 29s managed to pose a huge threat to Israel's tanks and armoured vehicles, which is why we're seeing Israel really looking into active protection systems. The original variant that entered service in 1979 was relatively small as a Sackloss ATGM with a 93mm 9M115 missile suited for hitting targets at a range of about 1km. The Mete M introduced in 1992 featured a larger 127mm missile with a tandem heat warhead for enhanced performance. Tandem being that it 
first punch will actually break through the majority of the explosive reactive armor or ceramic armor, and the second charge punching through the armor of its vehicle itself. And this was very common for anti-tank guided missiles, and still to this day, very, very prominent platform to engage uh, very thick armored packages, and it works, guys, it really does work. And it does have a range, the newer ones, of up to around 1.5 kilometers and penetrates up to 800 millimeters of rolled homogenous armor behind explosive reactive armor, and that's key. The Mete M1, a further improvement of the Mete M, uses a 127mm 9M 131M missile on the 9P151 launcher that now has a 1PBN N86 V1 thermal sight. Thermal sight being important, guys, because obviously vehicles make a lot of heat and it's a lot easier to track a heat signature than it is to track with a wire guided sackcloth system. This configuration is suited for all weather operations, which is key. It has a range of around 2 kilometers and penetrates up to 950 millimeters of armor behind explosive reactive armor packages. The missile of the Mete-1 can also be fitted with a thermobaric warhead for use against lightly armored vehicles, fortifications and enemy troops. Basically, this missile is basically going to make your day really, really bad if you get punched through the side of a building or a lightly armored vehicle such as a Bradley and such uh, that's not been up armored. It's really going to cause you a really bad day. And those kind of warheads are primarily designed for infantry and buildings. They punch through the side or go through an opening and anything within that void or space that the missile detonates in it's just going to be a really bad day because obviously uh, heat explosives or, you know, um, tandem warheads are not really suited to engage infantry. These weapons really are primarily used for tank uh, engagements, which makes sense. But they do have the ability to knock out some infantry too if they're sneaking around in the, you know, wood line even or, or a building that they're trying to, you know, take cover in. A thermobaric warhead would really make a really bad day for most troops. Uh, overall, guys, this is a dated platform that has once again been upgraded to modern day standards for the Russian military. Uh, I would never ever want to come up against these anti tank guided missiles for sure. Any anti tank guided missile, honestly, if I was in a Challenger 2 or a Warrior or whatever else it may be, I don't want to see these things flying through the sky. I've seen the footage, you know, of uh, tanks in Syria and such being taken out by anti tank missiles, and this is definitely going to be the ones that can cause you a bad day. I mean, 950 millimeters of of armor past the explosive reactive armor that's a big penetration value guys and something that should really make tank crews a little nervous if they know those kind of platforms being utilized on the battlefield um i honestly do feel though that russia is starting to catch on that honestly the upgrade packages aren't quite working so much anymore they're looking into more advanced weapon systems top down attack munitions Clearly, this platform has seen its day with the Sackloss platform and, you know, Wire Guided platform. Wire Guided has its own ups and downs in benefits and disadvantages, but for the most part, Fire and Forget missiles are really the way to go forward now, and we're starting to see um, more and more countries trying to go down that route. Javelin being pretty, well, I would say pretty much the most dominant anti-tank guided missile in the world. Uh, Fire and Forget missile is really one of the pinnacles of technology when it comes to taking out tanks and heavily fortified structures, and Russia is figuring it out. They're saying, you know what, we need to catch up to this standard and make sure that we're engaging, you know, ourselves in the industry to work towards top-down attack munitions, because really that's the progress that people should be making in the defense sector to engage armor is come from above. That's where tanks are the weakest. Tanks are not designed to have heavy armor packages on top and, you know, exploit that weakness, and that's what they're going to do. So unfortunately, the Meti or Metai or whatever the hell you say it is, and I apologize if I have said it wrong, is going to be mothballed one day. Um, I'm sure it's still going to be used by many countries out there today uh, that can't afford the more up-to-date and advanced weapons platforms, but still, it's uh, definitely had its time in the history books. You know, it's still being concurrently upgraded to the... Uh, you know, Meti M1, it's definitely got some powerful characteristics with a 2km range and that 950mm armor, but I do honestly think that uh, top-down munitions is going to be the way to go. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. Please leave me a like and all the generic YouTube shenanigans that people ask you to do. If you do want to support my channel, I'd really appreciate you checking out my Patreon page. Uh, most of my military content tends to be demonetized for the most part. Uh, recently, they've actually been doing better, which is nice to see. But if you do want to support me, I'd really appreciate you go check out that uh, link in the description box below. I hope you have a wonderful ATGM-filled day. All the best. Bye-bye.